Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope you and your families are all keeping well at this time. As you know, Thursday is Founders Day, but this year, clearly, it will have a different feel. Some of what I'm about to say, some of you will have heard before. The theme of this assembly repeats itself every year. Indeed, this is the 10th Founders Day assembly I have led, and finding something original to say is sometimes difficult. After all, the message is pretty much the same. Each year I add bits and I take bits out, but it is unashamedly repetitive. And so it should be. Founders Day is repetitive. The format changes very little over the years. Indeed, if you look at the images of Founders Day from 1940 of the Cadet Corps and Masters in front of the Cenotaph before the service, the format is almost identical to today's format. Only not this year. This year we create history owing to the current global crisis and national emergency, a history we never wanted to create, especially in our 450th year. There will be no parade, no service in the parish church and no lunch, no old girls dinner the night before and no old boys dinner on Founders Day evening. Life is temporarily on hold owing to the national emergency we find ourselves in, but life will return to normal. School will return to normal and next year we will celebrate Founders Day as normal. But I do hope we will have changed a little. We may just appreciate things a little bit more and take less for granted and be grateful for what we have. And this is the link to Founders Day, appreciating what we have and not taking things for granted. I really do hope we will all understand and appreciate the real significance of Founders Day every year, but especially this year. So take the time now to reflect on what it means for you. You should all be proud on Founders Day, proud of your school and the community to which you belong. It is 450 years old, an ancient institution, and I very much hope it will be around for another 450 years. We are all very lucky to be part of it. Some of you will be leaving school soon, but this will always be your school. You will recall happy times and sad times, but it will always be a special place for you, and you will always be welcomed back. Indeed, I very much hope that when you leave, you will join the Old Boys and the Old Girls Association and retain strong links with the school. So yes, be proud of your school. It will always be your school. This year, I want you to consider Founders Day in terms of a day to, to celebrate altruism, because this is what it is. It is a day of celebration, remembrance and reflection. It is a day when we remember those who have gone before us and indeed those still living who are incredibly generous to the school. Many of you have so much to be grateful for. Without the kind donations of others who you do not know, you would be unable to benefit from a BGS education. I can say with some certainty that beyond the exam results which you achieve from BGS, the quiet confidence and inner steel that BGS gives you, the grounded ability to communicate with anyone will take you further in life than many, many even with much better academic qualifications but lacking the character that BGS instills in you. Founders Day is a school tradition which I hope you will in time come to remember with great affection. The old boys and the old girls certainly do. Founders Day will have different significances for all of you as you get older, but I think it will always have a significant memory for all of you. I hope a good memory at that. So on Thursday then, we celebrate Founders Day, designated as the day of commemoration by the Reverend Roger Kay when the school was refounded in 1726. Unusually this year, being held on a Thursday owing to the bank holiday this year on Friday. At 10.30, the whole school normally prays as one community through the streets of Bury, marching in procession behind the Corps of Drums and the CCF up to the parish church of St Mary the Virgin, members of the school, boys and girls marching together behind the Corps of Drums. At 10.50, before the service, a wreath is normally laid by the school captain, head girl and senior cadet at the War Memorial, reminding us all of the sacrifice made by so many old boys in the two world wars and whose names are recorded in both school halls. This is all about present pupils remembering former pupils who gave their lives in the service of their country for our liberty. It is a significant event, a time to be enormously proud of being part of the Berry Grammar School community. 
So at 10.50 on Thursday, take some time to remember former pupils who lost their lives in the service of their country. If you are in the CCF, this is a particularly meaningful time. Former members of the CCF, then the Cadet Corps, died for their country so that you can enjoy the liberty you do. Remember the There But Not There exhibition in art. When we remember those former old boys who have died in conflict, they are indeed with us, but not with us. Let us take a few moments to pause and reflect on this in dignified silence and remember those old boys who are there, but not there. Again, if you are in the CCF, remember that when you wear the cap badge of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, it is composed of former Fusilier regiments, including the Lancashire Fusiliers, who won six Victoria Crosses before breakfast at Gallipoli on the 25th of April 1915. Bury is a regimental town. We are at the heart of Bury, and our CCF's history is with the Fusiliers. When you next wear the hackle and cap badge, do so with, proud, with pride. Be proud to be part of the CCF, one of the largest, oldest, and in my opinion, the finest CCFs in the country. A religious service is normally held in the parish church at 11am, but this year we are composing a virtual service which will go live at 11am on Thursday. The form of the church service has remained the same for many years, but not this year. During the service, I will read the commemoration of benefactors. Most of us know very little about them, but the truth is that without their generosity and that of many others, BGS would not be here today. I will draw your attention to just a few of the benefactors on that list. In 1838, James Wood, a respected Cambridge academic and Dean of Ely Cathedral, remembered the opportunities given to him as a pupil at BGS and he bequeathed the sum of £500 towards the cost of bursaries for worthy pupils. In 1859 and 1860, Geoffrey, Earl of Derby, gave land for the enlargement of the school when it was situated behind the parish church. In 1907, Henry Whitehead, another old boy, gave approximately £8,000 for the building of the Roger K. Hall. That gift was worth a staggering million pounds at today's prices. Also in 1907, Thomas K., who was an old boy, provided the money to build and equip the rifle range. On to recent times. Well, since the late 90s, the school received no money from the government to exist. This meant that the financial assistance once received from the government ceased and was a real setback to the concept of social mobility, which schools like this enable by allowing pupils, irrespective of means, the opportunity of a BGS education. So to ad address this, the development office was set up. A great number of your parents receive Assistance with fees made possible through the great work of the Development Office who coordinate the generous donations of others who wish to support education. So you see the generosity of the founders so long ago steers the course of current developments to enable as many bright children as possible to benefit from a BGS education. If you are in receipt of bursary assistance, you have much to be thankful for on Founders Day. This is why Founders Day is so significant. This is also why we are able to produce such grounded individuals when they leave school. BGS is not some ivory tower where you only get to mix with other pupils who are from wealth. You mix with others from a wide range of backgrounds and parental professions, and we are proud of that. Some of the brightest and most capable leaders in their chosen professions are from very modest backgrounds. Berry Grammar School pupils will achieve in life because of intellect, wisdom and ability to communicate and because the school allows you to pursue your interests and talents, not owing to some stuffy old school tie network which has no place in modern Britain. The constant challenge is to realise this achievement annually. Receiving funds for bursaries will always remain a priority because it provides opportunity and it is simply the right thing to do. I need to remind you of a very special old boy who died a few years ago, but has left a very obvious lasting physical legacy to the school, Clifford Billings. Clifford was a keen footballer and had represented the old boys well into his 50s, 
following his return from World War II, where he had been held as a prisoner of war. Thanks to Clifford's donations, our sports facilities are amongst the best in the North West. His generosity has changed for the better the sporting facilities that BGS has to offer, to both its current pupils and to the community of Bury. As such, his memory and generosity to the school lives on. We have so much to be thankful to Clifford for. Something about the individuals who do donate. About 250 people currently donate to the bursary fund. Half of these donors are current parents, former parents or grandparents. This says a great deal about the value placed upon a BGS education by our closest constituents. Some donors choose to sponsor individual students, pledging to support those students throughout their education. That represents a tremendous belief in both the school and the individual pupil. And as a school, we have a responsibility to take to sorry to the sponsor to ensure that the students are receiving a first rate education. And we take that responsibility very seriously. So the school exists and prospers because throughout its existence, people have cared. They have appreciated that the school has endeavoured to provide an excellent education for those who can benefit from it. The generosity of the founders so long ago steers the course of current donors to enable as many bright children as possible to benefit from a BGS education. At this point, I should make mention of former pupils or friends of the school who were also significantly generous to the school, but have sadly passed away this year. Their generosity enables so many of you to benefit from a BGS education. So let us remember in particular, Peter Stock, a donor, parent, grandparent, and well-loved by the school community. Peter Greenhalgh, an old boy, distinguished academic, and big supporter of bursaries. Both Peters were great supporters of the school, and in so many ways, not just financial. Jeff Bennett, old boy, former school captain, former officer commanding the CCF and master within the school, very much loved and respected by all who knew him. I attended his funeral together with the school captain and senior cadet the day before we went into lockdown. Mr Newton gave a mu moving eulogy to someone who clearly meant so much to so many, and the school fly flag flew at half-mast on the day of his funeral as a fitting tribute for this great man. And Mary Taylor, former head girl who died in the past year, aged 100. So if you are in receipt of a, of a bursary, you have much to be thankful for on Founders Day. This is why Founders Day is so significant. This is why the format of Founders Day changes very little. Use Thursday to reflect upon what we have. Be thankful for it. Be proud of this school, your school. So happy Founders Day for Thursday. Stay safe and be proud to be part of Berry Grammar School. Thank you. 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 Thank you! And a very special thank you to...